How many of you have heard of the Da Vinci Code movie? How many of you were thinking, damn, I wish I can see what's inside that cryptex without having to touch the cryptex? Well, I've been working in technology to do just that, but I didn't have a cryptex. So I started with something that is more familiar. Let's see, what if you could read a book without opening the book or without flipping the pages? So here is a video of an experiment that we did showing this concept. So in this experiment, we printed letters in nine pieces of paper. We stuck the paper together, mimicking a closed book. We used terahertz to scan through the stack. And this is what you see, the T on the first page. Then you will see the H on the second page. And then the Z on the third page. And so on until we can recover the nine uh, letters on, the, on all these pages. So I'm here today to introduce you this new type of wavelength called terahertz. Terahertz is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which contains all available wavelengths in the universe. Visible light is also part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and we have been using visible light since the beginning of time to see the world around us and to study natural phenomena. However, visible light is only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Our capability to see expanded in the 19th century as new ways to capture different wavelengths were developed, and nature of light itself was, the, was better understood. So for example, the discovery of X-ray offered a whole new way to look at the human body. Ultraviolet sources made fluorescence a fundamental tool for chemical analysis and forensics. Anyone familiar with the CSI TV show? Infrared cameras enable us to see at night by capturing the heat signatures of objects. And microwaves are using, are using radar to see airborne objects far away and in presence of clouds. So terahertz, it's here. It's between the infrared and the microwaves part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And it has been very difficult to access that part for the last century. So it has been only in the last 20 years or so that really we had tools that have access to that part of the spectrum. And that offered new possibilities for scientific research and exploration. So why terahertz is interesting? Well, terahertz combines nice features. You can see through many materials, like paper, plastic, ceramic, textiles. You can have images in terahertz that are similar to the X-ray, but without the health hazards, because it's a non-ionizing radiation. And it's much more sensitive to the um, chemical composition of an object. Also, one interesting uh, feature is that terahertz systems operate in what is called pulse mode, like a radar and ultrasound. So you can get ranging and depth information of the objects. So you can use that information to reconstruct the internal structure of objects because you can see through the object and get information of the different layers. So the combination of these see-through capabilities, ranging information, sensitivity to chemical analysis, and excellent spatial resolution enabled us to read through the stack as I show in the video. But how we can apply this technology? Well, I mean, many ancient books and documents are kept in museums around the world. And many curators and book experts would like to read those books without touching them because they are so delicate that they don't want to damage. So Turkers can provide a technology that to do just that. However, this technology is still in a basic research mode, so um, don't get too overexcited, so it's still needs more, more, more uh, research so that it's practical. So let's take a step back. We always, the desire to see in all conditions and the scenarios has been, well, in our imagination. I mean, we have projected this desire in many super fictional and many super power, um, fictional superheroes, right? But However, uh, beyond the superheroes, science scientists have been using all these wavelengths to analyze the world and the universe around us. However, they have been using it in a different way than the superheroes do. <laughs> so terahertz is a new tool to what we call multispectral imaging, which is the combination of all these wavelengths to get a, a better information or better um, knowledge about the different objects and physical phenomena around us. We can think of multispectral imaging as a toolbox in which each wavelength is a tool specifically designed to do a particular study on, on physical or chemical phenomena. So terahertz is a new tool to that uh, tool set. But how we can, what, what else we can use terahertz for? Well, a few years ago, 
With some colleagues in Barcelona, we were thinking to use terracotta for inspecting paintings. And why paintings? Well, I, well, I like paintings. And uh, we thought, well, maybe we can see things that, would, because when you see a painting, you only see the final result. But then you forget that the painting is a process in which the artist may have gone through different versions. So maybe we can use terracotta to see different layers and maybe construct temporarily all these layers in time so you can get a sense of how the painting was created. So we contacted a private collector just to see what we could do with terahertz. And uh, this private collector had many Goyas for his own enjoyment. He had a room for himself, so with a few Goyas, like everyone, right? When you have a room <laughs> in your home, so you, you can enjoy your art. So he had a few of them, and he kindly let us scan this painting to see what we can find in that painting. And uh, in particular, he was interested whether this painting was authentic or not, because he wasn't sure about that, and he was, okay, well, you can find something that can tell me that it's authentic, then I'll be happy. So we inspected this painting, The Sacrifice to Vesta. It's from Master Goya, dated in 1771. And uh, well, we inspected also in X-ray. That's an X-ray image, which is kind of a standard tool in this field. And yeah, you look at the uh, X-ray image, and you can see the nails, you can see the frame. You can see some ghost images that correlate with the figures on the scene. But you don't see a whole lot more information. And here's the Terhers image. And right away, you can see that there is a whole lot more information going on. And this is just a layer of the painting. So you have all other layers that you can inspect as well. So in this painting, well, you can find features that can tell you stress in the canvas. So it can tell you that the canvas was stressed at some point, mechanically or thermally. You have also features that tell you texture and density of different brush strokes and the technique. And also you have features that provide hints about different positions of the figures at, of the scene at some point in time. But the coolest feature of all is here. And that was surprising. And that feature, I, if you look carefully, I hope I can convince you that it's very similar to the artist's signature. So on top is the artist's signature, and below is the signature that we only see in terahertz. So you can see the A, you can see the Y, you can see the G. The O doesn't show up, but well, I mean, it's not perfect, but nothing is perfect, right? <laughs> so, so that feature is only visible in terahertz. So you don't see it in X-ray, you don't see it in infrared, you don't see it in the visible, because it's hidden by a, by a um, layer of uh, varnish that become dark over the years. So it's blocking the, the visual of that, that signature. So the finding this feature, this yeah, was very make the owner very happy because it really justified the price he got paid for the, for the piece, which was a couple of hundred thousand dollars, something like that, something ridiculous. So what we could use these capabilities in the future? Well, our cell phones are becoming smarter and more sophisticated every day. They are incorporating a bunch of sensors that um, track our activity, our position, and now we can even talk to them. Although, well, my iPhone has a hard time understanding my accent, but it's getting there. <laughs> so imagine that these cell phones will have, at some point, cameras or sensors that will allow us to see in all these wavelengths in, uh, so we can expand our truly vision sense. Or, for example, you go to a gallery, and then you look at a painting, and then you want to see this painting in terahertz and fantasize about the possible scenes that would have been possible as the painter went through all these iterations. So maybe we also can talk to the cell phone and have an intelligent conversation about the style, techniques of the artist. And I think that could bring a truly immersive experience in museums for both kids and adults. So next time you see the Mona Lisa, what if she will be frowning and not smiling? Or if you see a starry night, what if only the moon was painted? Or maybe we can read the Dead Sea Scrolls without unrolling them. Thank you.